Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter six of Speak by Lori Halls Anderson. Um, these videos aren't that long, which is okay. We are just going to keep reading and going through the book. So let's get right into this. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video now. You have been warned. Chapter six, homework. I make it through the first two weeks of school without a nuclear meltdown. Heather from Ohio sits with me at lunch and calls to talk about English homework. She can talk for hours. All I have to do is prop the phone against my ear and uh huh occasionally while I surf the cable. Rachel and every other person I've known for nine years continue to ignore me. I'm getting bumped a lot in the halls. A few times my books were accidentally ripped out of my arms and pitched to the floor. I try not to dwell on it. It has to go away eventually. At first, mom was pretty good about preparing dinners in the morning and sticking them in the fridge, but I knew it would end. I come home to a note that says pizza 555-4892. Small tip this time. Clipped to the note is a $20 bill. My family has a good system. We communicate with notes on the kitchen counter. I write when I need school supplies or a ride to the mall. They write what time they'll be home from work and if I should thaw anything. What else is there to say? Mom is having staff problems again. My mother manages Efforts a clothing store downtown. Her boss offered her the branch at the mall, but she didn't want it. I think she likes watching the reaction when she says she works in the city. Aren't you afraid? People ask. I would never work there in a million years. Mom loves doing things that other people are afraid of. She could have been a snake handler. But the downtown location makes it hard to find people to work for her. Daily shoplifters, bums ping on the front door, and the occasional armed robbery discourage job seekers. Go figure. We are now two weeks into September and she's already thinking Christmas. She has plastic snowflakes and red felt wearing Santas on the brain. If she can't find enough employees for September, she'll be in deep doo-doo when the holiday season hits. I order my dinner at 310 and eat it on the white couch. I don't know what which parent was having seizures when they bought the bought that couch. The trick to eating it on it is to turn the messy side of the cushion up. The couch has two personalities, Melinda inhaling pepperoni and mushroom, and no one ever eats in the family room. No ma'am. I chow and watch TV until I hear dad's jeep in the driveway. Flip, 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 cushions reverse to show their pretty white cheeks, then bolt upstairs. By the time dad unlocks the door, everything looks the way he wants to see it, and I have vanished. My room belongs to an alien. It is a postcard of who I was in fifth grade. I went through a demented phase when I thought that roses should cover everything and pink was a great color. It was Rachel's fault. She begged her mom to let her do her room over, so we all ended up with new rooms. Nicole refused to put that stupid little skirt around her nightstand, and Ivy had gone way over the top as usual. Jessica did hers in a desert and cow dudes theme. My room was stuck in the middle. A bit stolen from everyone else. The only thing there that were really mine were the stuffed rabbit collection from when I was a little kid and my canopy bed. No matter how much Nicole teased me, I wouldn't take the canopy down. I'm thinking about changing the rose wallpaper, but then mom would get involved and dad would measure the walls and they would argue about paint color. I don't know what I would want it to look like anyway. Homework is not an option. My bed is sending out serious nap rays. I can't help myself. The fluffy pillows and warm comforter are more powerful than I am. I have no choice but to snuggle underneath the covers. I hear dad on the television, clink, clink, clink. He drops ice cubes in a heavy bottom glass and pours in some booze. He opens the microwave for the pizza. I guess slams it closed, then beeps. Then beep beeps the timer. I turn on my radio so he'll know I'm home. I won't take a real nap. I have this halfway place, a rest stop on the road to sleep where I can stay for hours. I don't even need to close my eyes. Just stay safe under the covers and breathe. Dad turns up the volume on the TV. The news team anchor dude bellows. Five dead in a house fire. Young girl attacked. Teen suspected in gas station holdup. I nibble on a scab on my lower lip. Dad ho hops from channel to channel watching the same stories play over and over. I watch myself in the mirror across the room. Ugh, my hair is completely hidden underneath the comforter. I look for the shapes in my face. Could I put my face in my tree like a dryad from a Greek mythology? Two muddy circle eyes under black dash eyebrows, piggy nose, nostrils, and a chewed up horror of a mouth. Definitely not a dryad face. I can't stop bring biting my lips. It looks like my mouth belongs to someone else, someone I don't even know. I get out of bed and take down the mirror. I put it in the back of my closet, facing the wall. That is the end of this chapter. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.